Hello friends and welcome to this edition of On The Farm. Our focus, sorrel. Sorrel making the drink that is. We visited Mike's farm in the Butler's area where we got an inside look to his farming operation, specifically looking at sorrel, red and white sorrel. And then we had the veteran Miss Mary Doe who demonstrated how she has made sorrel for more than four decades. When we come back, we take a look at our feature. Thanks for staying with us and welcome back to On The Farm. In this particular clip, we take a look at our visit to Mike's farm. Mike, welcome back to On The Farm. It's good to be on the farm again with you. The last time you were here, we saw the bounties of your labor. Um, this time around, we are focusing on sorrel. We have the red sorrel and interestingly enough, I learned that we have the white sorrel. And so we're going to talk to a little bit about um, sorrel, your crop sorrel, um, what are expectations for the upcoming, the upcoming season. So tell us about your, your level of production you have here in terms of sorrel. Well, I have a quite a good amount of sorrel. The level is good. The harvest looks very promising this year. I think that I have enough to supply the whole of St. Kitts and Nevis so we can have a sorrel Christmas and a cake Christmas. And we have both sorrel, the red, the white. The white is more stronger than the, the red, really, and is often used for like wine and rum and things like that. If you normally do that for drinking purposes, it will drink, it tastes nice, but it don't have a color. Mm -hmm. And people love the mm -hmm. color. They love the red. Let us talk in terms of how much sorrel you, you, you're, you think you're going to, to harvest in terms of, of weight and where are you expecting to offload the amount of soil we are seeing here? I, I know the visions of the soil drink all year round, but Christmas time, the numbers tend to go up. You see, I, I, I think I have a good about almost 10,000 pounds of soil here. And I send as far as United States for Thanksgiving. So people will come and buy and take them away, stack them in the fridge. And when Thanksgiving comes next year, they use them and I stack them up again the following year. And then I have to send someone to St. Martin, some will go to Monstrat, Sink it, of course, and then Nevis. How can you forget your own? You have to make sure that your own people really sit back and relax and put soil on their table. And when the priests come around and the elders come around, they have something to offer. <laughs> Let us talk about, I, I see quite a, a large number of red soil. What, what quantity of white soil you have? I know you said that it's stronger than, than the... the the red one? Uh, the quantity of white sorrel won't be a lot, maybe a hundred pounds or maybe less. Because it's just a few seeds I picked up from a friend of mine in Antigua, sent them through with one of our pastor for me and he must have prayed over them and so all of them come and just yeah. a start for next year. Start next year me. I do hope that I'll do a whole acre, half acre of white sorrel. And so all those who are going to the industry uh, drink it like that, up to them. How, how, how do you sell your sorrel? In, um, white and red, is it the same price, different price? Um, what kind of um, packaging you're talking about? Um, 10 pounds, 5 pounds? How, how, how do you, you, you go about selling? Uh, I sell them like $10 a pound, $10 a bag. I do them in okay. some baggage, $10 a bag. I've been selling them for $10 a bag ever since no bill yard. And I'm still on the same opinion. I believe that the poor is of the poor need to drink too and Sorry. feel good at Christmas time. And so I am here to help the poor man. So it's $10 whether it's red or, red or white. white? Whether it's red or white, $10. And, and you, sometimes if you don't have, it's free, it. that one on God. You, you, you're selling your soil directly or do you sell to supermarkets? Where can people get, get your soil? Well, that's a tough question, yeah. I sell it to local people, I sell it to the hoteliers, I sell it to the supermarket folks and and so on. So wherever you go and you picked up a sarwil, you, you can know. remember Mike. <laughs> um, are we ready for sale distribution? Of course, I started doing it now and by later I have, I'm sure more than 50 bags 
just for a start. I don't know. You need last a stroke mm -hmm. because I think I have to hire you, hire Huey, and maybe the priest over there to come and help me to cut some of these side. Mike, tell us about the the life cycle of your crop. How, how long um, your crop take before they're ready for harvest? It's three months, three and a half months. The, the red sorrel, for instance. But I plant them and normally plant them on the long day. Because in the long day, I get them spot on for Christmas. Mm -hmm. You may be surprised if I tell you that the old folk, I listen to the old folk a lot and the old people say that the more you jump up in carnival and so on, that's the time to plant the crop. And so I normally plant mine in August, August Monday. And Juve. you know what happened August Juve, Monday? Juve. It's Juve. Mm -hmm. And so when the people in town jumping up for culture armor, I'm out here planting the soil because I know they go jump up. <laughs> eh? And they go grow and beer too. Mm -hmm. And so every time I plant that time, all my through my life, I get good results. But this time around, I went and I plant one on the 21st, 26th of September. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that it's being already. And so now I have three fields coming in on me unexpected because I cast the one down below on this shorter days where the photosynthetic cell and so come on. And before they reach two, two feet, they're being. And I, I, I am <laughs> blown out the water. And so that crop there will take at least maybe 70 days, 60, 70 days. But these go right down to the duration of time. And that's what I use all the time. Fresh local fruit and vegetables produced for our nourishment by local eat local. Well, as you can see, Mike's farm is a bounty of sorrel, both red and white. And so you know of one place you can go to get some sorrel for this year's Christmas season. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we go to our demonstration with Miss Mary Do. This message has been brought to you by the Ministry of Agriculture in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. Welcome back. Let's take a look at how Miss Mary Doe has made her soil for more than four decades. So what we have here is some cement bush that I have already washed and I'm going to pour them in. These are some, um, uh, what do you call it, cinnamon sticks. Also pour them in the hot water. And these are some kakanda root. I also pour into the boiling water. So what I did now, I am um, just break the cloves a bit. This is some whole cloves, in which I just try to break it up a bit so that the army um, can release more of the flavor into the um, the sorrel. And this is um some ginger, in which I'll pour some of that. in as well. Now what we are going to do, after you have the ginger, the sorrel, I mean the ginger, the cut on the root, and also the, um, the cinnamon stick, we are going to just take them now, put the sorrel into the kit that is already washed, and we are going to pour the water over the sorrel. So what I'm going to do now is to pour the sorrel into the kit. Well, it don't have to boil it because the water is already boiled. So the, um, the heat of the water is going to pull all the flavor together from out of the So we are just going to pour it over and then leave it stand. 
And it's a better way really to do your sorrel than boiling it on the stove. Put the sorrel to boil. Because what you do, you, you kill all the enzymes from the sorrel. So what you have, you just have um, a bunch of red water. You don't really have no strength in the sorrel because all would have, the fire would have already taken out the strength of the sorrel. So with the boiled water that we pour over it, it wouldn't kill the enzyme because um, we all know that um, if you're making bush tea, that's how we do it as well, pour hot water over. It keeps most of the enzyme in, but once you put it on the stove and let it boil and boil and boil, all you have after is just the red water. You don't really have uh, the strength of a palm and the, of sorry. But this now that we have in here, you let it stand for a few days and our, until Christmas and you have a real good sorry. Because that's how um, I was taught from our lady that raised me. And weeks before Christmas, she do uh, just what I'm doing here is what I saw the old lady does. And she get everything and she um, pour it in a kit and she cover it down and she leave it there. That's what you call marinate, the sorrel marinate and everything come together with all the, um, the spices. So when you pour it out and you start drinking it, oh man, you feel like you're in heaven. <laughs> so you see already taking its color. It has already take its color. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. This is what it's going to, but after it's spent a few more days, it's like it's marinate and it's getting, and even, you will call it, it's cure. When it's cure, it tastes even better. It's like when you're making the good old wine. Even after you finish straining it, don't show the whole batch of the sorrel. Because what the sugar does, it causes it to fermentate. And once it starts fermentation, it is not, it doesn't last as long. But once you pour off this after it's set, I mean, after it's already draw out. You can bottle it and whenever you want, you just pour it into a can and whatever container, what the amount you're going to use and your sugar accordingly. But you don't sugar the all of your sorrel otherwise, you just waste your sorrel. Because after a few days with the sugar in the sorrel, it is going to spoil it. You're going to give it a fermentation and what you're going to get is just like, you know, you see the, um, the drinks where you buy from the, the supermarket, that is what you're going to have. But if you want real good old time sorrel, this is the best way to do it. They don't want too dark of a sugar. If the sugar too dark, it, it's going to um, take away the color. If it's not sweet enough, you'll have to pour in some much sugar. I don't believe in too much sugar. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been making sorrel, um, what, what, what is so good about the sorrel drink that, that you tend to love? Well, um, sorrel drink, um, I've learned to make it from a little girl because the, um, the lady I, I raised with, um, um, she raised me from the age of 10. Every year she will get um, the sorrel and she will get them. And if all of what I demonstrated this morning with the spice, the nutmeg, I mean the cinnamon sticks, the cloves, and she will boil the water, pour them all into the pot, and then after which she will throw them over on the sorrel and close it down and leave it for weeks. So by the time Christmas comes, you're not only having a red drink, but you're having sorrel marinate with other spices that really gives it that good old flavor of sorrel drink. And that is how I learned to make it from a child, I mean, from the age of 10, looking at the old lady, and then after I come to have my own family, I start doing it the same way as I saw her do it. Thank you, Mary, for that demonstration on how you have made your sorrel for more than four decades. And for that sorrel that was just freshly brewed, it was an absolute treat and delight to sample. Fresh Local.
local fruit and vegetables produced for our nourishment by local eat local. Well, friends, that's it for another edition of On The Farm. This time we focused on sorrel, the great division tradition during Christmas time. We hope that you have purchased your sorrel already and that you're setting up for a wonderful Christmas with some sorrel from our local farmers. The agro-processing unit here has some ready for your consumption as well. It is our hope that you would have also purchased or made requests to purchase your smoked meat products from the abattoir. Remember, deadline is December 6th. As always, we continue to encourage you to buy local, to eat local, to support our farmers and fishers, especially during this festive time. So until next time, I am Rohan Isles, and I'll see you on the farm.